Hi friends, I'm Lisa Roberry. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today starts a whole new adventure and I'm so excited to bring you guys along with me. This is the kickoff to my hysterectomy series. So if you are new here, hello and welcome. Um, I hope you'll subscribe and hopefully find this series helpful. Um, today marks one week until surgery and I am so excited. I am so ready. And so I wanted to kind of kick off this series with kind of what led us up until this point, um, why I decided to choose to go the hysterectomy route, as well as what items I have decided to purchase in preparation for, for surgery, as well as some items that were gifted to me to help with the recovery process. Um, so I figured I'd share all of that with you today, just to kind of, like I said, kick off this series. I will be vlogging during my recovery. So a surgery day, all of that, like I'm going to, I'm going to bring you guys along with me. I personally find videos very helpful in that, um, like, first of all, I don't feel like I'm alone. <laughs> I just feel like, okay, there's someone else out here that is going through the same thing I am. And, um, I personally like to know people's personal experiences. One thing I will say, I am not a medical professional. So if you are having um, issues. If you are considering surgery of any kind, definitely consult your medical professional. Um, anything I am going to share here on my channel is just um, recommendations that were given to me as far as products. And then obviously my own personal experience. I am not one to tell you the hysterectomy is the best route for you. It may not be. So definitely consult with your doctor for sure. I just figured I would share my personal experiences because when I am going through something, I throw myself into it 1000% <laughs> and I am a researcher. I'm like, okay, I want to know the nitty gritty. I want to know the details. I want to know how you felt. I want to know the things that helped you get through these things and what maybe you would have changed, what you would have done differently. And I found videos here on YouTube to be very helpful, very helpful. And I didn't, I didn't feel like I was going through this alone. Um, turns out there's a lot of women who are going through this and, um, honestly, not a lot of people talk about it. And, um, uh, there are some videos here that were super helpful. They've, um, really nothing super recent. Um, everything's been, you know, a few years old and which is fine. Like obviously nothing really changes with, with this process. Right. Um, but I just feel like maybe it might look a little bit different since we're still in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> So we'll see kind of how that goes, but, um, figured I would start this journey with you guys. So if you are new here, hello and welcome. I hope you'll stick around and subscribe and hopefully you'll find this series to be helpful. Um, if nothing else, I hope you feel like you're not alone and you're not, you're not going through this alone. Cause I promise you, you're not. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay. Where, what happened? Where, <laughs> Why did I decide to go the hysterectomy route? Um, I'm tired of being in pain, to be totally honest. Um, it's assumed that I have endometriosis. I did not have the surgery to diagnose me officially with endometriosis, um, but I just have horrible periods and even beyond periods, um, I'm just in pain every day. I have some sort of pain or cramping every single day, whether I'm on my period or not. Um, and it's awful. And my periods have gotten significantly worse over the last mm, year and a half, two years. And it just got to a point where, um, you know, it is, it's affecting my, my life. It, it really is affecting my life and, and the way I live my life. And honestly, I never really gave it much thought about having a hysterectomy, honestly, because I just figured that doctors would just say, Oh, just deal with it. <laughs> like, you're a woman. This is, this is just, this is what you have to deal with. And I figured we just had to, to live with the pain. And, um, you know, it, it had gotten to a point this year where the pain had been so bad during my periods that like, I can't hold anything down. So in terms of like taking any kind of like Tylenol or Advil or anything for the pain, I, I couldn't keep anything down. So I wasn't getting help or relief with any, um, over the counter, like pain medications. So, um, you know, it got to a point where my husband would look at me and say, do I need to take you to the hospital? And I'm like, what are they going to do for me? What are they going to do for me? They're not, they're going to look at me and say, really, you're here in the emergency room because of cramps. <laughs> and I was just like, there's nothing they can do. So, um, 
it, I remember that, I remember that it was that period <laughs> that I was like, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I literally like each period got worse and worse. And I just thought, I don't know how I'm going to live through the next one to be told. Like, I know that sounds dramatic, but I was like, I don't know how I'm going to live through that next, the next cycle. Like, I don't know how I'm going to do it. So, um, I scheduled an appointment, saw my OBGYN and there were some options. Um, I think, I think doctors want to give you options rather than going straight to hysterectomy. Um, the first option, well, so <laughs> let me, let me back up a little bit. So I have had IUDs, um, cause I know some people are like, Oh, you know, go, go the IUD route. Blah, blah, blah. Um, I, I, IUDs were not a super great fit for me. I had two IUDs and, um, they gave me massive cysts. Oh, pain. You want to talk about painful cysts? Oh, so bad. They would rupture and it would seriously, like I'd fall to the ground. Like so bad, so bad. I would get them all the time when I had the IUD. So that was not a good option for me. So it was at that time that, um, you know, my husband's like, oh my gosh, like you're going through all of this for like a birth control measure. Um, and for anyone who's newer here, my husband and I do not have children. We have made the choice not to have children. Uh, <clears throat> so he had, he had said, you know what, why don't I get a vasectomy? You know, that way we don't have to deal with all of this. You don't have to be in pain anymore. Let's just, let's do this and, and be done with it. And so he had the vasectomy and everything was great. So, um, then fast forward to basically, like I said, a year and a half, two years ago, and my periods really started getting like really, really bad to the point where, like I said, I didn't know how I was, how I was going to get through the next one. So it was at that moment that I was like, I'm done. <laughs> I am so done with this. So went to my OBGYN and he said, okay, so we have options. He said, um, you know, we can do a uterine ablation, which is basically where they go in you are awake. <laughs> I will say at least with my provider, you are awake. Um, you are sedated, I feel like, but you're not put under and they go in and they cauterize your uterus. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, I, yeah, if you wound up going through that and you felt like you got relief from it, that's amazing. The research I had done, which like I said, when I, when I start something, when I get into something, I throw myself in 1 million percent. The research I had done was that most cases with the uterine ablation are not successful. It may help with the bleeding. A lot of times you'll wind up not having a period for a year, two years, but then it winds up coming back for in most cases. Um, or like my mom, my mom actually had a uterine ablation and it, it didn't work at all. <laughs> it never actually worked for her. So, um, and you know, I know every single case is different and maybe I would have a successful case, but I just felt like I'm not going to have children. And there's a, there's a, there's a chance that this could not work and I'm going to be back in the same situation. And then we go to hysterectomy. So, um, after doing my research and talking to him, my OBGYN more about it, he said, all right, let's do the hysterectomy. So, um, so, and this was back in June, back in June, uh, we had said, okay, that's fine. But I'm like, but here's the thing. We are in a pandemic <laughs> and elective surgeries are postponed quite a bit. So he was like, you're looking at anywhere from six months to a year for surgery. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I remember breaking down in tears in the doctor's office. I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to do this. So he prescribed me birth control. <laughs> uh, the first birth control pill I was on. So here's another um, little bit about me. So I have a blood condition called factor five Leiden. It is a condition where my blood clots easily. So I cannot take traditional, like your average, um, birth control pills because they have estrogen for me. I can't take estrogen because it will more than likely clot my blood. So, um, that's yeah, not <laughs> a good fit for me. So I have to take a progesterone only pill when it comes to birth control pills. The first pill, <laughs> I believe it was the Nora B pill. I couldn't stop bleeding literally did not stop bleeding. I think the entire month of July didn't stop bleeding ever. <laughs> and I just, I told my doctor, I was like, this 
does not work for me. I was like, did it help the cramps? Yes, it did subside the pain to be at a more manageable level, but I was never off my period. Like I was just bleeding all of the time. And I was just like, this is insane. This is insanity. I can't bleed forever. Like this is, this is insane. So we switched up my birth control pill to a different birth control pill. And I have been on that ever since. And that actually stopped my periods. Um, I, so I actually haven't had a period since August, which has been great, except that I am still in pain. So I do have cramps of some kind every single day. Um, I do still have the, um, like the PMS feelings, <laughs> um, and all of that, but I, I just, I haven't had a period. So that's been, that's been fine. But um, there are all kinds of side effects with this. Um, I have gained weight. I have um, become very puffy. There, I it's it's been off and on since um, since I started this pill, where I have and have not been able to wear my my wedding rings because they just it got so tight. Um, and that was all because of this pill and it gave me terrible nightmares. Uh, just in the beginning, not so much anymore, but so vivid 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 nightmares like every night it was insane um that did wind up going away um and yeah and now starting today i am no longer taking the birth control because they don't want me taking any medication or anything like that one week before surgery and so here we are here we are so um so he did give me my OBGYN did give me the referral for the um the surgery. My OBGYN himself is not doing the surgery. Um, he doesn't perform surgeries anymore. So he refers out and he's referred me to an amazing surgeon. Um, even prior to now, um, I wound up, this is actually going to be my second surgery. My first surgery has nothing to do with, with my reproductive organs or anything, but, um, I had a breast reduction and my OBGYN referred me to like the best surgeon that he was aware of and he did an amazing job. So I totally trust my OBGYN and his opinions on these surgeons. So, and he hooked me up with an amazing surgeon for this surgery and she is absolutely one in a million. She's a real gem and I trust her. She is confident and I know she's gonna take good care of me. I know that in my, um, my pre-op appointment with her, which was last week, um, I remember her actually telling me, like sitting there and telling me, I'm gonna make you feel so much better. And I just, I remember just feeling like a weight being lifted because I was so nervous, you know, it's surgery. So it's, it's nerve wracking, right? But she came in and she was like, it's time, like it's finally time. And I'm like, I know. And she just said, you know, it's, she's like, I'm gonna make you feel so much better. And I just, uh, I, I just, I could have kissed her. <laughs> it's like, I love you. So, but it has been a minute since I have gotten to this point. Cause you may be like, well, if you originally saw your, um, your OBGYN about this referral and all that in June, we're in December <laughs> cause it's six months, six to 12 months for surgery and they were not lying. <laughs> so I just had to wait by the phone until I got the call for surgery. And so I got that in November and they said, how's December 21st look? And I'm like, sign me up. So then they started spitting all the dates at me for blood work and pre-op and post-op and COVID tests and all the things. And, um, yeah, it was a little bit surreal, a little overwhelming and, but we're here and it's time. So and during that time, um, I have done a ton of research, uh, from the time that we decided hysterectomy was the way to go. Um, up until now, I still continue to do research because you can never be too prepared. Right. <laughs> so, um, so is that pretty much where we're at to this point? Yes. Um, I personally am having a total hysterectomy. Now there are three types of hysterectomies. So you can have a total hysterectomy, which is what I'm having, where they take the, I'm leaving my ovaries, hopefully. Now, um, one thing that my surgeon did say is that like we can go in there and if there is a lot of diseased tissue or if something just doesn't look right, I may wind up taking one or both of your ovaries. That's not the plan. Um, but she said, you know, I want to do what's going to be in your best interest. And I trust her 1 million percent. So she even said, if there's a little bit of endometriosis on the ovaries, she's, she's planning on leaving the ovaries. Um, you know, she'll clean up as much as she can, but like, she's not, if she goes in and sees a little bit of endometriosis on the ovaries, she's not just going to just remove them. So she's, she's not, um, 
going to be aggressive with that. Um, the plan is to keep both of my ovaries so I won't need hormone replacement because the ovaries are what um, continue to give you your, your hormones. So I shouldn't need hormone replacement. Um, but everything else is going. So my uterus, my fallopian tubes, and my cervix is all coming out. So that's total hysterectomy. Um, you may hear people who refer to a partial hysterectomy. Partial hysterectomy means they take the uterus and they leave the ovaries and they leave the cervix. If you're doing that, you chances that you're still having a period. Usually you can still get cervical cancer um, and things like that. So my thought is, nope, <laughs> you could just take it out. So that is partial hysterectomy. Radical hysterectomy is when they take it all the things. They take the ovaries, they take the tubes, they take the uterus, they take the cervix. There's nothing left in there. So um, I am fortunate and I feel very fortunate that I am. I have the option to leave my ovaries. So um, so I'm okay with it. I'm, I'm great and I'm ready to go. So total hysterectomy, here we come. So I have some things. I have some things I wanna share with you uh, because like I said, I love to do research and um, I was in some Facebook groups where I saw some suggestions and then obviously in some videos as well. So what I will say, if you are in some Facebook groups, if you find that it's giving you more stress prior to surgery, take yourself out. <laughs> Can I just say, it's just a suggestion uh, because I had to do that personally. I was in, I think two or three different hysterectomy groups and it scared the bejesus out of me. <laughs> I was like, cause here's the thing. People are only posting when things aren't going well, when they're having issues, when they're having infections, when they wind up in the emergency room, when things are happening, that's what they're posting. People aren't posting that they're having a great recovery. Um, people aren't posting when they have successes. People aren't posting that stuff. At least that's what my experience is. Maybe at some point, you know, in your journey, maybe things will change. But all I have to say is if you are finding that these groups are providing more stress than good, remove yourself. <laughs> Bless and release. Bl Seriously, remove yourself from the groups. There's so many amazing resources on the internet. Talk to your medical professional. Um, you know, my what brought me the most comfort is actually seeing videos of people going through the same thing um, that I'm going through and see what their recovery looked like and things that they were doing, what worked for them, what didn't work for them, things like that. So that's what works for me. I had to take myself out of those groups. I was like, uh... <laughs> It was just giving me way too much stress. So with all of that being said, let's go, what am I gonna show first? Um, let's go ahead and go straight to the hospital. So from my, my pre-op appointment, um, from my pre-op appointment, they gave me a little surgery kit. I wanna make sure my like, medical information wasn't on the front um, or on the bottom. I got a little pre-surgery kit. So let me show you what's in here. So very interesting. So I have, here we go. We have an unboxing. Ta-da! <laughs> here we go. Different kind of unboxing than what I typically do here, right? Um, so we have surgery prep instructions here. We also have um, enhanced recovery, little enhanced recovery pamphlet. Things to do, things not to do, that kind of thing. So we've got that. So we have actual products though. <laughs> So I have two packs of these disposable claws that are treated with chlorhexidine. So um, I've got I've got these. So this is to kind of wipe my body down the morning of surgery. I've seen people who would get soaps that they would need, like a special soap that they would use in the shower. Um, I just got these cloths to just wipe my body down the morning of surgery. So I've got those. Um, here's the super interesting thing. I got a drink. <laughs> I got a drink. So normally they tell you like, don't eat or drink anything after midnight the night before surgery, right? Well, this, so Kaiser, they want you to actually take this. It's actually called, it's a pre-op drink. <laughs> It's CF pre-op. Um, this is a complex carbohydrate uh, pre-surgery drink. It's flavored in white grape. I'm sure it's delicious. <laughs> I'm sure it's delicious. So this is, I guess, really carbonated. Um, 45 milligrams of potassium. There's vitamin A, there's zinc. So they want you to drink this two hours before surgery and you need to drink this within 15 minutes. She specified that, um, oh yeah, I'll have directions. Drink one bottle two hours before your scheduled arrival time. 
uh, finish drinking it in 15 minutes. That's what they were, she was so like adamant about telling me you have to drink this in 15 minutes, two hours before, but it has to be down in 15 minutes. And I'm like, what's the rush? <laughs> like fifth, why 15 minutes? What happens if, what happens if I don't drink it in 15 minutes? Um, very interesting. So there's that. I'm, I'm assuming it doesn't taste super great. Um, I, yeah, I, I they had me watch a video in the pre-op um, appointment and it was saying something about how this just kind of gives you like a boost of like sugar and stuff and helps you with your recovery. I don't believe that. <laughs> I think there's something else about this drink, but we'll see. I, I like, I like sparkling water. I don't love grape flavor, but we'll see. So stay tuned for surgery day vlog and I'll let you know how amazing that tastes, but it's, it's clear and it's, it's clear and carbonated and ready for pre-op. <laughs> so we've got that. So we've got that kit going. Um, I also, this was actually, this actually was recommended in a Facebook group as well as in some of the, um, videos that I've been watching and it is a belly binder. I will, if I can remember, I'll link everything. I think I pretty much got everything except for my pre-surgery kit from Kaiser. <laughs> I pretty much got everything on Amazon. So if I can remember, I will link all of the things um, in the description box if you are looking for surgery items. Uh, belly binder. So this is to kind of keep your belly like firm because you're not going to feel super great and there's obviously they're going to be taking, they're going to be removing an organ. So like if you need to sneeze or cough, this just kind of keeps things tight, I guess. And just overall, it's people have said that it has helped them just feel more secure um, after surgery. So I did get a belly binder. Some of the people I was watching, they actually got a belly binder from the hospital. I don't think I'm getting one from the hospital. So I went ahead and just purchased one. So I've got that. Um, I also got some compression socks. <laughs> Super exciting stuff, you guys. Um, but I got this pack of um, compression socks. Like I said, um, I, since I have a higher risk of blood clots anyway, um, I was like, I'm not messing around with it. So I went ahead and purchased some uh, compression socks, some medical grade compression socks, and they're super cute little patterns. Let's see what else we have. Um, I like these pink ones. Pink stripes, pink argyle. I'm going to be super fashionable. And pink polka dots. So I need to get to washing these. So compression socks for the win. I'm gonna be looking amazing. Um, I also grabbed some peppermint tea. I love tea anyway, but um, I hear that the peppermint tea helps with any nausea or gas, things like that. So um, yeah, so I grabbed some peppermint tea. Um, I also grabbed some of these Gin Gins. So they're ginger hard candy. Um, when you go into surgery, they are going to put a tube down your throat and you are probably gonna come out of surgery and feel a lot of soreness in your throat. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna kill two birds with one stone here. And if I'm nauseous, I've got the ginger and this will also help with the throat. So I've got grab some gin gins. Um, I also have, this is kind of random, but um, some hot hands. <laughs> these I actually didn't newly purchase. We have these because my husband goes uh, camping and hunting and stuff. So he brings these when he is doing said activities. So um, I just figure these are great. If I'm not near an outlet, I have, oh, one thing I don't have here, but you don't need to really see is um, a heating pad. So I've got a heating pad that is ready to go. But um, if I'm not near an outlet or something, which I pretty much should be because I'm basically only going to be in my bed or on the couch. But if I get crazy and I, I don't know, decide to do something, um, I've got some hot hands and this, I don't know. I, when I remember when I was on my period and having these pains and stuff, I would just take two of these and just like stick them like right in the band of my pants because it just, the heat would just feel. So if I still needed to get up and do things like do laundry, do dishes, things like that, then I had the hot hands still in, um, and the band of my pants and it still felt nice. So now I will say I am going to be mindful and listen to my body. I will rest and recover. Um, I, my surgeon was, gave me like the mom look and the mom voice and said, you know, you work from home, you have to rest. Like you're going to feel better sooner than 
your body is going to be ready to like get up and, and continue with normal activities. So, um, you know, walk, you definitely need to walk. She wants me to walk 20 minutes for three times a day for 20 minutes, three times a day. Um, and that'll be fine. I'll be, I'm not, I'm not someone who can like really sit still for a really long time. So, um, knowing that, and get up and, and walk a little bit, but like actually doing any like house chores or things like that, that's not, it, it can't happen. So I have to listen to my body there. Um, I also went ahead and picked up, this is the same as Gas X, but it's Phazyme. I went ahead and with this rather than, um, rather than Gas X, because one of the girls that I was talking to, um, she said that this helped her way more than the Gas X did. So if you are wondering why, why? <laughs> um, they fill you up, they fill you up with gas during surgery so that they can see things better. So they pump you full of gas. And so when you wake up, you've got gas pains. Um, I hear they're pretty intense. So I went ahead and picked up two boxes of extra strength Phazyme. So same active ingredient as, um, as gas X, but one girl was saying that this actually helped her more. So we'll see. Um, another common problem with any surgery is constipation. So they, the anesthesia will usually contribute, contribute to cost constipation. Um, also the, the pain medication that they're going to give you both through IV as well as pills, um, is going to give you some constipation. So I'm not messing around. So there's a few things that I have to help with that. Um, I went ahead and got this, um, it's a stool softener and stimulant laxative colace. I went ahead, I was like, I'm not messing around. <laughs> I am not messing around. So, cause I remember after my breast reduction, oh, it was so bad. And I'm sorry if this is TMI and it makes you uncomfortable, but here on my channel, this series, the whole series is going to be TMI. <laughs> so if you don't want to hear details, my videos might not be the ones to watch for this, but I, I mean, I'm just going to keep it real and put it all out there. I ain't messing around. So I've got this. Um, also, let me show you this sweet gift that a girlfriend of mine um, sent me, my girlfriend, Sarah. She sent me this little basket of goodies. She had a hysterectomy as well. And she said that some of these things really, really helped her. And so she sent them to me and I'm really excited. So first of all, a little notebook. So I'm really, <laughs> I'm so excited for this because then if I'm not picking up the camera right away, I can at least like, maybe jot down some notes of like what I'm feeling or things like that. So I've got this notebook and some pens. So cute. Um, and then, um, a sweet little shape and buff form. So I can keep the nails looking good. <laughs> Um, here's what I wanted to talk about. So she actually sent me this two pack of smooth move tea and I have heard of this and I heard that this was amazing. I actually picked up <laughs> some boxes myself as well. So this was something that Sarah had said. She was like, she didn't have it for her surgery, but she said that she wished she would have. Um, I believe that's what she said that she wished she, she wished she would have had it. So, um, she sent some my way, so I'm really happy to have this. So that should um, help out too. And I've got two more boxes as well. So I'll be set, I'll be set. So I've got that. Um, she also sent um, this, these hot and cold gel packs. So kind of the same thing as the hot hands, but probably a little more gentler. So I think I'll use these first, but um, really nice, nice and soft. And then also some um, some cough drops. Once again, your throat's gonna feel kind of yucky, so some cough drops. And then she also included this sweet, um, this almond nail and cuticle manicure oil from the body shop. So that's so sweet. She's, she was so nice. Um, also a little mask here, uh, a sleep mask. So that's really nice. And then also, so sweet so a linen mist and lavender and chamomile and if you know me you know everything's got to smell good <laughs> everything's got to smell really good but uh the lavender and chamomile is going to be really really nice um also some some lip balm so this is sarah hap lip balm And I'm someone who I've got to have lip balm on pretty much all the time anyway. So this will be nice. And she sent this little like basket. So I'm just like going to leave this in my bed and just be like, okay, got that. 
got that. And then some, some like slipper socks. So, so soft and cozy. Um, so we've got those. And then last but not least, a grabber. <laughs> So I know you probably, my mom thinks I'm so weird. <laughs> she was like, you got a grabber? Heck yeah. Um, because they are going to go into my abdominal situation and remove an organ. So I'm probably not going to feel like I'm going to want to like bend down a bunch. So I went ahead and got a grabber <laughs> so I can grab for things and not overexert myself or use my stomach muscles. So there's that. <laughs> So as you can see, I definitely, I, I did some research. I definitely want to be as prepared as possible. So I feel like I'm pretty ready. And um, both between the things that I had picked up and the things that my friend Sarah sent me, um, I, I feel like I'm pretty much ready. So here we go. We've got one week until the big day. And uh, like I said, this will be like the kickoff to this series and I will be vlogging and sharing my recovery experience. And just remember that everybody recovers in a different way. Um, you know, it, and it's also going to depend, my surgery is going to be done, um, laparoscopically. So there's going to be three small incisions. There's going to be one, like, I don't know if it's in my belly button or right, like around my belly button. Um, and then a, a little incision on each side, like near my hips. So three small incisions, they're going to go in, um, with a machine and cut some stuff up <laughs> and remove it. So um, my surgery is outpatient. I think that really, really depends on where you're located, what hospital you're in, um, where you're at, because pr those protocols are different. Also, if you're having an, an abdominal hysterectomy, um, more than likely they're going to keep you for a couple days because, you know, you have a larger incision. So, um, everything can look a little bit different, but it is planned for mine to be outpatient. Um, I was talking to another one of my girlfriends who's actually having her surgery this week, and I think she is staying for two days. So I think it's pretty, I've seen so much both ways where it's outpatient, where they wanna keep you for a few days. Um, I'm fine either way. If my doctor feels like I'll be good to go home the same day, then I'll be fine to go home the same day. You know, if there's any issues, then I know where I can contact her or if I need to go to an emergency room or what have you. But I'm really hoping for a smooth, uneventful recovery. So we shall see. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you found this helpful, informative. Um, if you are new here, I hope you will subscribe and hopefully um, hang around with me during this uh, new journey of this hysterectomy recovery. So thank you guys so much and be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you are going to like the, I was going to say liking this series, but, um, we're just kicking it off. <laughs> so if you like the idea of this series, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you're new, please subscribe. If you're already subscribed, be sure to hit the not notification bell. That way you stay up to date with all the craziness that is about to unfold. So have a great day guys. I'll see you in my next video.